30 day squiz, we have a resonance box with a tuning fork. Uh, and this one is rated at 256 Hertz. In other words, it's going to complete 256 vibration cycles per second. It sounds a little like this. It's a nice pure tone. And we're going to take another one of these boxes and put it right next to it. However, we are going to modify it ever so slightly. I'm going to put a little bit of mass up at the top of this piece here. In other words, it's going to be harder. It's going to have more inertia for these uh, arms to bend in and out. So if this is 256, this is going to end up being a 256 with a little extra mass up top. See if you can uh, hear the difference. A little bit of difference. Question today is, what happens if I hit them at the same time? In other words, they're both making their tones at the same time. That's our quiz. Let me hold this up. As always, draw out, think and explain as best you can, and then mark your confidence on that sheet. Typical student responses include, it's going to be louder, it's going to be chaotic, it's not going to sound good because now you just have more noise. This was giving off noise, this is giving off noise. Noise plus noise is more noise. And you might push them and say, well, is there any chance that they could be less noise, like this one is maybe less than a 256? And they'll say, no, just can't happen. It's always going to be louder all the time and it's going to be chaotic. your students might be struggling to figure out this quiz. So, in a previous video, we showed that we can use an oscilloscope and portray the sound waves as sine waves. Show them that again, and then we'll give them a, a little lesson. But let's just show you what we're talking about. Have them use these transverse waves that we're creating and see if they can figure out what's going to happen now when we take a 256 and slightly less than 256 and put them together. Let your students know that they need one more tool to really help them with this. Say we're going to do a math lesson to which exactly zero of the students will be excited about this. But say look we're not going to necessarily use numbers. We're going to end up drawing out these transverse waves that we just saw. So, um, let me draw these out. So we have a transverse wave. What we want to talk about is, what if I take one of these transverse waves, and this is maybe a representation of our tuning fork, and we add a second one that's exactly in phase. Let me draw this one out. I now have two waves that I'm going to add together. So in other words, we're going to add two graphs. Let's show you what that looks like. So I'll put a line here, just like any other math problem. And I'll say, let's add these together. Well, here I'm going to end up saying, well, these waves have a positive or negative amplitude. Think of these as being like ocean waves. So you might have a wave going above our sea level, call that a crest of the wave. And then down here, it might be below what the sea level was. We'll call that a trough. If I were to take a crest and then add another crest to it, they simply add. Amplitudes will add for waves. Let me draw that out. So I have everything lined up. Now look, let's say that this was, I'll just use easy numbers, zero and one, and let's make that negative one. 0, 1, and negative 1, okay? So if I have a 1 plus a 1, when I take them straight down, 
I'm going to end up not at 1, but at 2. 0, so that's 1, and that's 2. So if I came straight down here, I should end up being at 2. And if I had 0 plus 0 at the very beginning, still 0. And then right here, 0 plus 0, 0 again, negative 1, negative 1, and this one would be our negative 2. So this is 0, this is negative 2. I think we can see that we're going to have a bigger waveform like that. This is called constructive interference. And you might be saying, well, if we have constructive interference, can we have destructive interference? And the answer is yes. I'm going to draw um, destructive interference, and I'll speed this up. Now with our destructive interference, they're going to be slightly out of phase. In fact, we're going to shift the same wave over so that when this is hitting a positive one, this is going to end up hitting a negative one. Start at zero just like we did before. Zero, when this is a negative one, this one's going to be a positive one. And this would be zero. That would be uh, the opposite. And we could end up something like this. And now we're going to end up having our wave that's identical and simply out of phase. And this is the crazy part. Because if I had a one and then a negative one, that adds to be zero. And if I had a zero here and a zero here, that's zero. In fact, it's always going to be zero. Now, your students are going to say, wait, this is not possible. How can I have sound plus other sound and make no sound? But that's what we're going to really get at. Now that we know about this interference, constructive and destructive, see if your students can now go back and see if they can figure out what happens when I have two very close, but not identical, frequencies playing at the same time. I wanted to go over a real-world example before we go any further, because this is the perfect time to think about this. See, we're taking sound and we're adding other sound and we get rid of, and we're getting rid of the sound, and that's what uh, earphones or these ear protection can do for us. These are a cheap pair, and if I put these on, I can still hear myself speak. I can hear other things. If I wanted to really attenuate that sound, I could use a much higher quality. These are going to end up being thicker, heavier. They're going to press on my ears much tighter. When I put these on, it really does muffle the sound. I can still hear a little bit, but. If you have noise canceling earphones, what happens is a computer will take whatever sound it picks up with a microphone, flip that over, add that to the existing sound, and our ears hear nothing. I do this all the time with my uh, uh, cheap computer pair. Software online will help me with that. And now even earbuds of various types have that ear ca canceling um, technology. So it's a wonderful thing. All right, let's get back to adding our two frequencies that are just slightly out of tune. We're all set up again. I've got both of my uh, forks ready to go. And now go this proper setting.
we can see what's happening. We can see at some points we end up getting destructive interference and the sound goes to down to almost nothing. We almost hear nothing for a moment, but then we also hear amplitudes getting really loud. That's our quiz for today, but if you want to stick around, we're going to go into a little bit more depth with this. To fully help us understand how we get the beat sound, remember we took our waves, our tones, and this pure tone is the same. And I've drawn this ahead of time to save us a little bit of time. That was our, we'll just say our 256 that we were using. And we know that if I add two of the tones together constructively, they simply add together, just like a math problem. It's one of the wonderful things of nature. It's called superposition. The, um, these waves simply add, just simple arithmetic. And if they're out of phase, we can see again, they can end up adding. In this case, it is deconstructive, right? Well, let's say that I took our first tuning fork and I had it drawn before. Now I'm going to take a second one slightly uh, out of tune, slightly different hertz. Just so you know how I drew this ahead of time, each one of these 90 degree marks would have been five centimeters. So on this one down here, I just did every four centimeters. So you can see they're no longer lined up. They're out of phase. But what we can do is we can add them together just like we did before. They're just not gonna be as pretty for their solution. But let me just start on this. And on this very bottom uh, summation part down here, I've also made these equivalent to the first or the top one. So I can draw little lines down so we can add these together. And I'll just draw a nice light little line just so we can see just enough of what's going on here. And then we'll approximate and then we'll add. I don't want to make these too dark. Just enough where we can kind of see them. Like this, something like that, something like this one. And and I'm ignoring the middle one, as you'll see in a moment. And finally, at the end. Oh, I'm off a little bit, but we'll see. All right, let's just add these together. On this first one, by definition, it was at a one. But notice this one is over to the side, so it's not quite at one anymore. It's starting to already come down. So maybe this is going to be like 1.9 or something like that. I'll put a dot there. And then on this next one, I've got zero and I've got a negative and it's not quite at its peak. So we'll say it's like a 0.7 or something like that. So I could put 0.7 right here. And then on my next one, I've got a negative one. And then I've got like maybe a, uh, I don't know, another negative five. So I've got negative 1.5. I'll put that there. Now go to the next one, zero. And then I've got uh, this one right on that line. So zero and probably like a point seven or six or something like that. Not as big as it was. I'll go to the next one. I've got like a negative, uh, we'll say point two and uh, real close to one. So this one's going to be about a point eight, something like that. So like that. And then this next one is going to be a zero and maybe a negative, uh, it's coming back down 0.7, something like that. And this one, they're almost completely out of phase uh, here. I almost have a peak and a peak, so we probably have a zero right here. So what we have is we're gonna end up something like this. We're gonna end up having something that's gonna end up going down. The amplitude's gonna go down. What that means is I can kind of think of this as kind of making an envelope like this. And if I were to have enough of these uh, total periods put together, I can show you what this is going to look like. And I'll do that very quickly. I'll just put, uh, let's do, let's add one of these and we'll add another one of these. And then we'll end up something down here like so. I'll put these across. Now I'm going to make these in a much higher frequency just so we can see what's going on here.
and I'll make these very high frequency. So maybe we have uh, one of these that's going up and down. This marker's out, so let me get a new one. So let's say this one is going up and down something like this, okay? And now we have another one that's going to end up adding, and it's even a higher frequency, something like this. Well, when I add those together, what I'm going to end up getting is these envelopes. So we're going to end up something like coming down, coming up. This one's going to be coming over like that. And we'll end up with these beats here. We end up with higher amplitudes that go to smaller amplitudes, back to higher, lower, and then back low again like that. And that's how we get that beating sound, that wah, 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 wah. Now we can count those because the number of envelopes that we have is really just subtractive or additive. In other words, if I had like a 256 and I know they're out of tune a little bit, I'm going to hear some of that wom wom these envelopes. Now, let's say that I get one of those beats every second, wom wom wom, something like that. Well, I know that my other one is off by about a hertz. So if I had a 256 to begin with, we said we added some mass to the top, and that would be a little bit more difficult for it to keep up. So let's say it's going to be a 255. Even though on this one I drew it, this one actually has a slightly higher frequency than that. But I think you can see when you add the frequencies and they're not identical, you end up getting these beats. And it's a wonderful process. And it's actually really simple once you understand it. All right, that's your in-depth analysis for this, and that is your quiz.